Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. I am Dr. Sonali Singh from Rismex College of Education. Today we will discuss about your kingdom Animalia that is a part of your biology course at senior secondary level. Now I will discuss about the general features of kingdom Animalia. These are multicellular eukaryotes that is they contain a nucleus and organelles and are enclosed by a plasma membrane. They have ingestive means the process of absorbing nutrients, heterotrophic nutrition. They have the power of locomotion. They show increased sensitivity through nervous system. Now we'll discuss the basis of classification of animals. Uh, the uh, criteria which is being on which they are being classified is your organization. Second is symmetry. Third is body cavity. Fourth is number of embryonic cell layers and presence or absence of notochord are the features used for distinguishing, uh, distinguishing broad categories of animals. The first part on which we distinguish our animal uh, kingdom is organization. Bodies of animals are multicellular although cells may or may not be organized into tissues and organ systems. Animals such as sponges are aggregates of cells. These are at cellular level of organization. Nidarians have groups of cells performing specialized functions. They are at tissue level of organization. All other animals have organs and systems for performing body functions. They are at organ system grade. The second criteria is your symmetry. It means dividing the body into two equal and identical parts. Now again here sponges are asymmetrical. Nidaria and Echinoderma larvae are radially symmetrical. All other animals are bilaterally symmetrical or dorsiventral. That is one that has two surfaces different from each other in appearance and structure. The third criteria is body cavity or coelom. It's a cavity between the body wall and food canal. It is not present in a coelomates. A means no and coelom means body cavity, but it is present in eucelomates. EU means U means true. Again, we have the third type of uh, criteria, uh, animals that are pseudocelomes. Pseudo means false. That is, they do not have a true body cavity. For example, in round worms, they are pseudocelomic, having pseudocelom cavity. The third criteria on which we divide our uh, animals is embryonic layers. Three layers of cells that is ectoderm, mesoderm and the innermost endoderm in the embryo. These are called as the germinal layers. These give rise to various parts of the body of the animals. Sponges and nidaria do not have mesoderm in their embryos. They have only two germinal layers that is ectoderm and endoderm and that's why they are called as diploblastic. Others have three germinal layers. It means that they have uh, ectoderm, mesoderm as well as endoderm and they are termed as triploblastic. The fourth criteria on which we divide our animal kingdom is notochord, means its presence or absence. Now it's a solid found in embryonic stage or adults of some animals which are grouped as in phylum chordata. All animal groups lacking notochord are termed as non-chordates. This kingdom is further divided into two subkingdoms. The first subkingdom is Parazoa. Parazoa is in it, there is no symmetry and it has no tissues. It is also divided into following subphylums. The first phylum that we will study about this subkingdom Parazoa is your phylum Porifera. It has a tissue grade of organization and has only two embryonic germ layers. It means that it is diploblastic. It is a coelomate, has no coelom, no body cavity, no coelom. Notochord may or may not be present. It is asymmetrical. Now your phylum porifera that includes sponja has several characteristics. It's a body with many pores, canals or chambers through which water flows is in, uh, called as the canal system. It has a large aperture called osculum at the upper end and its body encloses a large cavity called spongocele. It has no organs, movable parts or appendages. Different kinds of cells perform different kinds of functions. 
usually it has an internal skeleton of calcareous or siliceous spicules or of spongin fibers or both. Reproduction is asexual that is by budding and when the sexual reproduction takes place it's uh, almost in all marine animals. Example cycon, euplectella, euspongia etc. The second phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum Nidaria. This is an example of pseudocelomates that it, it has a false coelom. It has a radial symmetry. It includes hydroids, jellyfishes as from the figure it was very clear it is uh, examples are hydra, sea animal and corals. Now what are the main characteristics of this phylum? It has a body with no head and no segmentation. Body wall is two layered external epidermis and inner gastrodermis. It's a jelly like non cellular mesogly in between. It functions in hydrostatic skeleton. Nidoblast or stinging cells are present that helps it to catch the prey because it's carnivorous in nature. Skeleton is calcareous, horny or sometimes none is present in it. Asexual reproduction takes place by budding that is in the polyp stage or sessile stage and sexual reproduction takes place in free swimming stage and that stage is called as medusa stage. So it has two stages in which the reproduction goes on one is your sessile stage or polyp stage and the other one is your medusa stage. It has a radial symmetry all are marine except hydra which is found in fresh water. Either it is fixed like hydra, sea anemones and corals or sometimes it exists in free floating like the jellyfish. Now the third phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum platyhelminthes. It's, it has no coelom, it is asymmetrical, notochord may be or may not be present. For example, flatworms come in your phylum platyhelminthes. Now what are the main characters uh, of the animals that are present inside this phylum? Uh, first of all, it, they have an elongated body, soft bodied, dorsoventrally flattened worms without true segmentation. There is no body cavity suckers or hooks or both for attachment to the body of the host. Sexes are usually united. Mostly sexual reproduction occurs with asexual reproduction in some. Elementary canal has only one opening that is your mouth in some forms. Example tapeworms. There is no elementary canal at all in your tapeworm. A few are free living but mostly they are parasites. Example is uh, for free living uh, platyhelminthes the example is planaria, uh, fasciola that is in normal language we call it as a liver fluid is a parasite or sheep liver, tinea that is your tapeworm is a parasite is again a parasite on the human intestine yeah present in the human intestine. The next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum ascalminthes. It belongs to the class nematoda. It has a false coelom, notochord is absent, so it is non-chordata. Examples roundworms and threadworms. Thread they have an elongated cylindrical round body. Body cavity is of a form of pseudocelom that is false body cavity. Elementary canal in it opens at the two ends. They have mouth and anus. Sexes are separate in them. Males are smaller in comparison to the females. They are mostly parasitic in nature, but some of them live freely in the soil. Ascaris is a common roundworm parasitic in nature and is found in the intestine of humans. Pinworm and Bucheria, that is your filaria worm are some other examples of it. Now the third phylum that we are going to discuss is phylum annelid. That is, it includes earthworms. They are elongated, segmented, coelomate. Now the first thing that is they are coelomate, they, it means that uh, they have a true body cavity worm like animals. Body is provided with setae or parapodia for locomotion, means their legs are being termed as parapodia from with help of which they move from one place to other. They have a well developed digestive system with the elementary canal opening at both the ends. Excretory system in it are called as nephridia. 
sexes are united as in the case of earthworm means male and female are present in a single earthworm or separate as in the case of nereids regeneration is quite frequent in uh, case of phylum annelida they are aquatic some are terrestrial animals some live in tubes and some are even parasitic some examples of the uh, worms belonging to this phylum are nereids earthworms like ferritima that lives freely in the soil and hirudinaria now the next phylum which we are going to discuss is your orthopoda it includes crab scorpion insects spiders etc these animals or these uh, insects have segmented body and can be differentiated into head thorax and abdomen it means their body is divided into three parts head thorax and abdomen head and thorax are often fused means they are not so well defined differentiated and they are fused to form cephalothorax they have jointed legs for locomotion one pair each on some or all body segments their exoskeleton is of uh, made up of chitinous cuticle shed at intervals this process is called as molting now their sexes are completely usually separate orthopods are further divided into further uh, divided into uh, four classes that is first is crustacea the second is myropoda third is insecta and fourth is arachnida now we'll discuss all these three classes one by one in detail your first class is arachnida this uh, type of insects have cephalothorax with two calicheri or calicheri that is the pair of appendages in front of the mouth they have three pedipalpi these are the second pair of appendages and the last they have four pairs of walking legs its abdomen is usually without legs eyes are simple sexes are separate in them and the example is scorpion the second class which we will discuss about these insect is your crustacea it has a body with dorsal covering called carapace it has a cephalothorax cephalothorax again means in which your cephalum thorax are being fused together thorax and abdomen are fused together it has 13 pairs of legs in appendages sexes are usually separate and eyes are compound the example of the insect belonging to this family crustacea is your prawn the third class that we will discuss uh, in this phylum is your class myriopoda it has a body with numerous segments each segment bearing one to two pairs of legs terrestrial and air breathing orthopods eyes are compound sexes are, are again separate and the example is millipede or scalopendra the fourth type is fourth class in fact is your insecta class the body is divisible into head thorax and abdomen thorax is divided into three segments with three pairs of legs in each segment usually they have two pairs of wings on the last two thoracic segments eyes are again compound sexes again separate example is cockroach now the next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum mollusca it includes your squids snails oysters in it these animals have a soft unsegmented body with a hard calcareous shell to protect the soft body they have a muscular foot to help in locomotion and also to act as a weapon in some cases some of the examples of these are uh, snails slugs oyster mussels clams squids octopuses now what are the main characteristics of the animals belonging to this phylum they have an unsegmented soft body means these are unsegmented soft body animals some of them are terrestrial and some of them are aquatic exoskeleton is in the form of a shell when present shell is usually univalve or bivalve internal shell is also present in some animals sexes are separate or united they have a muscular foot for locomotion the next phylum which we will discuss today is your echinodermata it includes your starfish brittle star sea urchins sea cucumbers etc these all are marine animals with unsegmented body head is absent body surface is marked with five radiating areas they have a radial symmetry 
endoskeleton of dermal carcareous ossicles with spines is present in them. They move by two feet. Sexes are usually separate. Regeneration of loss pass is a peculiarity, means they show the regeneration process. Adults are radially symmetrical, but the larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. The next phylum that we are going to discuss is your phylum chordata. The main characteristics of this phylum chordata is that notochord is present at some stage of life. In most cases, it is replaced by a backbone. The dorsal tubular nerve cord is also present. Gill slits are present at some stage of light, maybe in a larva stage or in an adult stage. Body is with a head and trunk and two pair of appendages are present in it. It has three subphylums. These three subphylums are urochordata, cephalochordata and vertebrata. In your subphylum uh, urochordata, notochord is present only in the larval stage. Body is back shaped covered by a particular tunic or testa in adult stage. Limbs are absent. Dorsotubular nerve cord is present in the larval forms and is reduced in the adult form. Example of this subphylum is, Euro, is your herdmania. The second subphylum that we will discuss is your cephalochordata. Now again notochord and nerve cord remain present throughout the life and extend through the entire length of the body. Body is elongated and flattened from the sides. Limbs or paired fins are present in it. They have a dorsal tubular nerve cord in adult form. Example, amphioxus. The third one is your subphylum vertebrata. Notochord is replaced by vertebral column, that is the backbone which we call in the general terminology. We have the body with well-developed heads, paired fins or limbs. It's cartilaginous or bony endoskeleton. Paired limbs are present in it. Dorsal tubular nerve cord is present which is divided into the brain and spinal cord and examples are all the animals with the backbone. Now this subphylum vertebrata is uh, divided, uh, it has a notochord which is uh, replaced by a vertebral column. It has two superclasses, agnatha that is your jawless vertebrate and nathostomata that is your jawed vertebrate. Agnatha. Agnatha means A means no and nathos means jaw. So there is no jaw present in them. And the second superclass is your gnathostomata. Nathostomata means jawless vertebrates or jawed vertebrates. It could it is your basically your jawed vertebrate. Now your superclass nathostomata is further divided into six classes. First is chondrichthys, the second is osteichthys, the third class is amphibia. The fourth is Reptilia, the fifth one comes to be Aves and the sixth class is Mammalia. The first two classes that is are Chondrichthys and Osteochthys include the fish. Fish means they are cartilaginous and bony fish. Fish are the aquatic animals, gill breathing and move with the help of scales. Now Chondrichthys. Chondro means cartilage and Ithys means fish. So your Chondrichthys means cartilaginous fish. Its mouth is ventral, tail is heterocircle. What is heterocircle? Means those fishes who have tails having the upper lobe larger than the lower one with the vertebral column extending into the upper lobe. Their skeleton is cartilaginous and they have five to seven pair of gills. Operculum means gill cover is absent in them. Example, dogfish or scolidon. Now the second class is osteochythys. Os means bone and ichythys means fish. So a bony fish basically. Now in this, this type of fish has a mouth, terminal mouth and the tail is, uh, your tail is homocircle. It means the tail that appears outwardly symmetrical but with the backbone passing the lobe. Skeleton is bony. They have four pairs of gill and in it operculum is present. Example, labio or rohu. Now the third class which we are going to discuss today is your class amphibia. Amphi means double of both and bios means life on land as well as in water. Means, have you heard of the frog? Frog lives in land as well as in the water. So this belongs to your class amphibia and they are termed as amphibians. 
the animals partly live in water and partly they live in land skin is smooth or sometimes it's rough they are rich in glands they have two pairs of limb pentadactyl pentadactyl means five fingered digits without claws body is with a distinct head and trunk and they have no neck two nostrils opening into the buccal cavity tympanum is present on the surface of the body wall they lay their eggs in water in the early stage of life that is their larva stage they breathe by the means of gills but when they turn into adults they breathe by lungs this you can understand with the help of example when the frog is in uh, its early stage of life means in the form of a toad it breathes through gills and when it turns into frog it breathes through lungs their heart is three chambered larval stage is single tailed and aquatic some are tailed as in the case of salamander and some are tailless example frog and toad some of the examples of uh, this uh, class amphibian are salamandra proteus rana that is your frog or bufo toad which you normally call it the next class which we are going to discuss here is class reptilia reptilia it is derived from the word reptile reptile means to crawl they are four legged or legless crawling animals whose body is covered by scales and they leg they lay their eggs on land some of the characteristic features of the animals belonging to this class reptilia is that they are terrestrial terrestrial means they live on land some are aquatic means they live in water body is covered with horny scales skin is often dry they have paired pentadactyl limbs snakes do not have limbs means uh, this uh, pentadactyl paired limbs are absent in snakes with clawed digits tympanum is a small and depressed and it is absent even in snakes respiration takes place by lungs heart is again three chambered but with a partially partially divided ventricle that is it is four chambered in crocodile as in the case of a crocodile their legs have leathery shell some of the examples of animals belonging to this class reptilia is tortoise turtles garden lizard wall lizard cobra crocodile ghadial etc now the next class that we are going to discuss is your class aves aves is derived from the word avis which means birds some of the characteristic features of these uh, uh, of the birds belonging to the class aves is that they are warm blooded means homeothermal some uh, also it is also called as endothermal that is their body temperature remains constant body is covered with feather scales are present only on the hind limbs and their body is divisible into three parts again head neck and trunk they have jaws with horny beak and teeth are not present in them hind limbs with four digits adapted for perching walking or swimming birds are able to perch to walk to hop and even they can swim bones with air spaces to make the skeleton light that is they have pneumatic bones forelimbs are modified into wings for hind flight for flight when they fly their forelimbs uh, actually in their structure their forelimbs are modified into the wings so that they can fly heart is four chambered lungs for respiration connected with air sacs voice box or syrinx as in called uh, in terms of here in the case of your aves is present at the junction of trachea and bronchi only left ovary and oviduct is present in the females all are oviparous that is they lay eggs eggs are have much of yolk and calcareous shell some of the examples are ostrich kiwi columbia that is your pigeon crow etc now the next class that we are going to discuss is class mammalia mamma means breast the characteristic features of this class is that body is covered with hair and they have presence of mammary glands which provides milk to their offspring sweat and oil glands are present in the skin body is divisible into head neck trunk and tail trail is absent in some projecting external ears or we call them as pinna is present digits usually ending in claws nails and hooves dentition is thicodont that that is teeth in sockets of jaw bones teeth are present in sockets of jaw bones and generally heterodont that is of four different types of teeth they have they have seven neck vertebrae homeothermal warm blooded and heart is four chambered 
testes are extra abdominal and in scrotal sacs viviparous they give birth to the young some primitive mammals are oviparous that is they lay eggs fetus is nourished by mother through placenta it is further divided into three subclasses class subclass prototheria subclass metatheria and subclass eutheria now your subclass eutheria has been divided into further orders the first order is your order rodentia these are herbivorous and terrestrial animals incisors are long sharp and chisel shaped forelimbs are shorter than the hind limbs example rat and squirrel the second order which we will discuss is your chiroptera these are flying animals four limbs are adapted for flight skin is folded that is patagium works as wing hind limbs are thin and short they are nocturnal means they are active at night bats have a very poor eyesight they avoid colliding against objects by echolocation in which the bat emits supersonic waves which are reflected back from the objects and the bat can perceive the reflected waves to determine the position of the object this method is in fact very similar to your radar way of functioning the third order which we are going to discuss is your carnivora as you all are very well aware of the carnivorous animals these are flesh eating mammals they have large pointed and sharp canines to tear the flesh fingers are present with sharp claws some of the examples of carnivora are lion tiger cat dog etc the fourth order that we will discuss is your primates primates have highly developed brain eyes are set forward in the head to provide binocular that is depth perception vision the neck is mobile limbs have five digits with flat nails the thumb of the hand and the greater toe of the feet are opposable that it helps them for grasping things two thoracic mammae that is breast are present some of the example of primates are monkeys apes and we human beings or man the fifth order that we are going to discuss is cetacea these are aquatic animals four limbs are changed into paddles they have no neck neck fish like shape but respiration by lungs the example of this uh, mammal is whale the next order which we will discuss is proboscidea these are large herbivorous terrestrial animals in it the fusion of upper lip and nose to form a long mobile trunk only one pair of incisor in upper jaw is present which form huge tusks in male example is your elephant the next order which we are going to discuss is your angulata these are hoofed mammals herbivores usually domesticated by man they have mammae with in a, are abdominal with teats example deer cows sheep etc so learners today we discussed about the kingdom animalia their phylum sub phylums further into classes and orders i hope you would have understood it thank you